What is up guys, this is Mr. Ninja Boy, and today I'm going to start a new series guiding you guys through Photoshop, starting from the very basics and essential to eventually getting into the more advanced stuff in graphic design. My goal here is to maintain simplicity in this series and to make it possible for literally anyone to learn to use Photoshop, even if you've just started and are already confused just looking at the interface. Don't worry, I can understand. It, it may be daunting the first time you open Photoshop with all these options. In fact, it can be intimidating at first starting with any new program. But my goal here is to show you guys how simple yet powerful Photoshop really is. The sky is truly the limit with what you can do with it. If you guys don't know, this channel isn't only focused on gaming. In fact, I've started it with tutorials on game development. By the way, you can check that out on the channel if you want to. But I've always really enjoyed teaching you guys my tips and tricks and passing on my knowledge I got in certain programs to newcomers and to people looking to improve. So I'm quite excited to start the series. Later on, we're going to be doing some really exciting stuff like making thumbnails, making logos, complex graphic art, and much more. But in this first tutorial, we're just going to focus on the very basics of Photoshop. This is the perfect guide for someone who's just begun using Photoshop. So like any program, the best way to familiarize yourself to it at first would be, would be to get a hang of the interface and all its features. So we're going to do just that. Then as we dive deeper into the, this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys a collection of simple yet essential features that you must learn while first starting. Alright, so let's get started. Alright, so let's get started with learning the interface. Now, um, to make sure that we're all on the same page with the interface itself, with all its features, all the windows, everything, let's go to Window and then Workspace and then make sure you're checked on Essentials Default, which is basically going to ensure that we have all the same features and everything. Alright, so now let's proceed and make our first file, our first project you can call it. So let's go to New, uh, File, and then New. And then this is basically the window where we're going to do all the settings for our project. So first of all, we can name the project whatever we want. I'm just going to name it example for the tutorial's sake. And then um, for the width and height, you can later on, you can do whatever you want, mattering on what the, what sort of project you want. Let's say you want to do like a Twitter header or something, and then there's certain like um, dimensions you want to do, then you choose that. But for now, we're going to do it a standard 1920 by 1080 um, dimension for this project 1080 and then make sure you're always selected on pixels okay this is important um so for the width and height you want to be on both on the same units essentially but we're going to be working with pixels because it's the easiest i mean i don't really work with centimeters or millimeters inches um on the computer it just doesn't make sense for me but i mean i guess it matters on what you're doing but for me um pixels for now we're just we're, we're going to work with pixels for both width and height um, and yeah, I was going to say for me, it's just the easiest uh, because, you know, everything is in pixels on the computer. So, um, yeah, so the, just select everything here. It doesn't really matter if you what you do for the uh, bit depth. I'm just going to go with 16 bit. And um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So let's press continue or OK. And then we continue to the screen, which gives us the by default, we're just going to have a blank white square. So this is, as you guys can see um, right here to the right. This is basically like the layers tab. This this shows us all the layers, all the elements, everything that is included in the project. So all we have now, this is basically like a very blank project. With all we have is this background um, white box sort of thing. So um, to, to first get started, and uh, we're just going to unlock this layer because by default, when you make a new project, the first layer is locked. So we don't really have a lot of freedom to do, to like move it around and stuff. So what we're going to do is actually double click on this locked um, icon or this uh, lock icon and then when we do that um, as you guys can see we have this like layer option so let's name it um, background so uh, let's name it background and then we can keep the color um, we can do it none and then it'll basically be the default color or we can choose whatever you want and that'll essentially just make the color of the um, not essentially the box, but that that's like the color here. Let me do that. Let's let's select a color. This is this is actually very good for organizing, and we're gonna go over that later. So let's, uh, as you guys can see, the red color that we selected is sort of kind of like marks it with that little red color. So later on, while you're working, you can always assign layers different colors, and with that, you can kind of organize your project. But um, that's not very important for now. We're just gonna learn the interface for now. So as you guys can see, we have a white background here. 
So the first thing we're actually going to do is learn the move tool. So the first tool that we are actually offered in this um, column to the left is this move tool. So we're going to select, make sure that you go to the right in this layers tab and select our only one and only layer in this project. And then we're going to select the move tool. And then we can, as you guys can see, we can move the box around. And what you see in this background, if you see this like sort of checkered um, background, that basically means it's it's transparent. Because if you if you render out this picture right now, it's basically going to be transparent. So all you'd see is this box and then nothing else. This background is transparent. Um, so what we're going to actually do is undo that. So you can undo move and then let's say you, you do a couple actions. The best way to undo stuff is to actually go control alt Z because that is the ultimately like you can only undo once. See, as you guys can see, I, I undid all the way back to creating the background. So let's actually read step forward. So it, if, if I do control Z, um, wait, hold on, step forward and let's, uh, let's, uh, let's add like, um, just, just for the tutorial sake, uh, let's just do like scribbles, something like that. So let's say I did control Z once and then I did it again, as you guys can see, it just redid that. So the way we go, um, step backwards, if you want to keep on undoing more than once is control alt Z, or we can go um, edit and then step backward. That's a very important tool you guys must know in the future. Um, anyways, so now let's add a a shape to this project. Um, as you guys can see, that is like we learned like to use the move tool, which is you know it's 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 quite straightforward. And then we're gonna we're gonna learn to do more stuff like rotating. So the first thing we're actually gonna do now to learn that is actually go down to this. This tool, right? You got, you, as you guys can see, it's like a little squiggly sort of shape. So we're gonna right-click on that and actually select the rectangle tool. So um, as you guys can see, we can we kind of have this little crosshair sort of thing. So we're gonna select and drag, and we're gonna make a rectangle by doing that. So um, we did make a rectangle, but as you guys can see, it's sort of like a a white rectangle. So it's kind of blending in the background. All you guys can see is like the black outline around it, kind of indicating that we're selected on it. So if we deselect that, um, as you guys can see, we can't really see the rectangle. So we're gonna we're gonna assign a color to it or a fill color. So um, we're just gonna go to the fill option, as you guys can see up here select that and we can choose any color for the rectangle since the background is white anything that isn't white is it's going to show so let's just make this um like a dark gray color i guess that works so now if we want to move the uh rectangle in the middle of course we can do that by just clicking dragging and if you guys want to move any object um, in a sort of linear fashion where you don't really if you want to just like uh, assign like a certain let's say we want to move it um, like horizontally so we can just like put it there and then if you just hold down shift and then move it it sort of locks to the position where it was if let's say we're moving horizontally now we can't move it um, left and right we can just move it horizontally because it's locked and then let's say we want to move it left and right there so it th that's how that's the way you and then let's say we let go of shift as you guys can see it just it does that so we can also do that diagonally of course so um that's the way you guys you guys can move things linearly where it kind of just locks on to the axis it's on so um now let's say we wanted to rotate this rectangle we can go control t and that is basically just uh or basically the the shortcut for the transform and um, let's say we wanted to rotate this rectangle we can uh, we can guide our mouse to the sort of corner of uh, the box where we kind of see this little arrow um, pointing downward and then to the left and once we see that we can click and drag to how we want to rotate this so let's say we want to rotate it like that or like that. And you can all, if you guys um, also can see like this angle sort of thing up here, we can do that numerically. We can, um, we don't necessarily need to do it visually here, but we can also input numbers and do whatever you want with the angles. Same with the width and width and height, um, all the dimensions. So let's say we wanted to reset that to zero just to, uh, you know, have it, have it like how it was before we did anything, any of the edits. Or um, another way you guys can do that. Let's say you uh, you scaled it, you did a bunch of stuff um, to the object, but you didn't 
you want to just revert it to how it was before um before you went to control t um you guys can just click this um sort of like undo uh, icon i guess and as you guys can see it kind of reverts it to what we did before the transform options so um now uh what we're actually going to do is yeah as you guys can see you guys can scale it visually um as i said or you can actually do it uh here so let's say we want it twice as big as it is now so we can go 200 percent by 200 percent so it, it's basically two times bigger than it was and then once we are happy with what we the edits we did we can just click this check arrow and then um or the check icon and then basically we've just um applied all the changes we did to this object all right so now we're gonna actually now that's basically like the very basics of the interface and now we're actually going to add a, some effects to this box, like a drop shadow, uh, maybe an outer glow or something like that. And uh, this is actually very simple to do. So we're just going to navigate down to, oh yeah, make sure you're selected on the certain layer. So if we select it on this, um, it kind of shows like th these little square icons where you can obviously do the changes and then um, you can do all the stuff that we learned. So I'm just going to revert back to how it was but make sure you're selected on the rectangle on top and this is all, all very important to actually know um like the uh it's kind of like a hierarchy so it, let's say we wanted to have this background on top of this where we wouldn't be able to see this we'd basically just have to drag that on top so any any layer that is on top is um is shown on top of it's, it's basically like a layering system it's very straightforward so yeah, always make sure that the smaller layers, this backgrounds are always on the bottom of everything. That's, that's basically the way uh, you want to think about it. So yeah, make sure this layer is on top of the background. And then let's say we want to add, like I said, effects. So we click on the rectangle and go down to this effect icon, click on that, and then go blending options. So now this is where we have a bunch of options where we can mess around with. So uh, the first thing uh, I'd like to do is to drop shadow. So have a little shadow um, behind this box. So we go down to this option and click on drop shadow. So as you guys can see, um, we have a little shadow um, behind this box, but we can make it more drastic, make it bigger. So we can increase, we can like make it uh, bigger by increasing the size and then the spread. The spread essentially makes it more like condensed, I want to say, but I'm not sure if that's the right word to use. But um, so basically, yeah, we can increase it using the spread and size. Size just makes um, make it makes the shadow spread a bit more. So let's make this size a bit smaller. So as as you guys can see we have a little shadow um behind it and that, that looks pretty nice and what else can we do um for the effects we can add a stroke and the stroke is basically like a little outline that goes around any object um so the stroke we can change the color let's make it red for example and then we can press ok and uh we can also increase the size of the stroke by going by clicking and dragging or also like inputting your own number so let's say we want it 10 pixels and as you guys can see, that's the 10 pixel stroke that we have around this uh, rectangle now. And uh, what else can we do? We can do a bevel and emboss. As you guys can see, it adds like a little nice 3D sort of embossed um, uh, bevel sort of effect. And we can increase the depth. And by doing so, uh, it, it gives that illusion even more. And then we can inc uh, obviously increase the size. And that, that doesn't look very good. Let's make it, yeah, that looks good. All right, um, what else can we do? We can also add a pattern overlay, and then you can mess with this, add your own patterns and stuff, but these are the default patterns that come with Photoshop. So this is a nice little texture sort of thing. Um, that's that's a cool texture, but we can't really see it since the background is like uh, white. So um, yeah, those are basically like textures you can add. So we're not gonna really add anything for now. We're just gonna keep it like that. Or actually, let's just add that texture. That looks, that looks pretty cool. And what else can we do? We can do an outer glow. So outer glow is basically, uh, let's add a different, let's make it red so it'll go nicely with the uh, with the border So or the stroke. So the outer glow is essentially just uh, just like a, a drop shadow sort of thing. It, 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 it's very similar to the shadow, but it's it, it basically, it's just like a little glow of a certain color that you can choose uh, or that, that basically outlines around the object. You can also do inner glow that um, that basically does the same effect, but towards the inside of the object instead of uh, it having it uh, on the outside of it. 
So we can also do color overlay. This is where we can, if it's not a shape and we can't edit the fill, we can actually do it um, here manually. So we can go to color overlay and, uh, and then we can change the color, do it uh, to whatever color we want. Uh, choose whatever color we want and um, yeah, we're not going to do that now. So we're going to just uncheck that satin basically just makes it a little darker. That looks that, that can be a cool effect. And also, yeah, inner glow, inner shadow. The shadow is based inner shadow is basically like a drop shadow, but it, re it makes it like in the inside of it. Same as inner glow um, uh, in comparison to outer glow. So the same sort of idea and a gradient overlay this is a this is a cool feature that we can take a look at so gradient overlays essentially it kind of mixes um colors into uh in, instead of having one solid color so as you guys can see this is a mixture of like a black and a gray slash whitish color and there's a couple of presets which we can choose as like a rainbow and there's um there's like striped black there's like there's cool colors so these are only the presets, but you guys can edit them. So let's say we wanted that and then we can edit it. So we can change the colors here so we can actually select that. And then we can select different colors. So let's say we wanted the middle color like green. We can have it red. And uh, yeah, so you can edit it to whatever you basically want. So there, um, let's say we're happy with that. And then that's the gradient overlay. So it's basically like a mixture of colors. That's the best way to think about it, I guess. So, um, yeah, let's just keep it with that texture. And uh, so, yeah, those are basically like the effects, the essential effects. They're so easy to, you know, to use. And um, it's very simple and uh, to add everything and drop shadow, all the strokes, everything. Um, they're very simple, yet they're used in like, you know, in in uh, quite complex graphics. I always use them. These are very basic and um, they work really well. So they're awesome. So um, now we're actually going to import a an image from the internet that I downloaded and edit that. So the way we're going to do this is actually going to go to file and then we're going to go to place. So there's two ways we can do this. We can go to file place and then find the image that we downloaded. So where this is an image of the McLaren P1 or let's say we undid that and then we can go to file open. And then we can open that. And then that actually opens it to the exact dimensions of the image itself. And that's the way, best way to do it if you want to edit a certain image instead of doing it, um, instead of placing it inside a project. But let's say you, you have a project where you want to mix pictures in and add uh, different pictures. You can go to file, place, and then find the image and then put it in. But um, yeah, so we're going to basically do some edits to this to this image. So the first thing we're going to do is actually duplicate this McLaren P1. Uh, um, so we're going to go to this tool right here, which is called the lasso tool. And as you guys can see down here, we have a little, um, this thing that says 50% It's basically the, how much it zoomed to the original size. So let's go hundred percent. So that just, this just means that we are looking at the exact resolution of this image. And um, the reason why we, we go 50% when editing the full project is that is so we can see the full project because if we go over 50%, we'd, we'd have to scroll around to be able to see everything. But for this, for the lasso tool, it's very important to see every little detail. So we're going to go 100%. And if you guys have a smaller image that you want to edit, then you'd want you'd, you'd want to go even bigger. But um, essentially, for this, we're just going to go 100%. And once we're zoomed in, um, we're just going to have a nice shot of the McLaren. So um, basically just zoom into a point where the biggest part of the image is the uh, the focus where you want to duplicate. So now we're just going to outline this, um, this McLaren P1 um, having selected this lasso tool. So we're going to outline it um, starting from here and we're going to do a bit of a sloppy job here. It's not very important to be very precise. But um, all you got to do is just click and drag with your left mouse button tool and just select um, all the outer part of the image that you. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'll leave this image in the description down below that you guys can edit the same exact thing that I'm doing. But if you guys want to do a different image, just find one on the Internet, anything really. Uh, you, it doesn't really have to be a car, but um, for this tutorial, it's simple. Um, a car. This this image is actually very good for like the duplicating and everything that we're gonna do. So I'm just selecting it with this lasso tool. It doesn't really have to be very precise. If I was gonna do this very precise, I'd probably go like like 600% on the zoom and then just do like very pixel by pixel, making it really really sharp. 
But uh, anyways, now that we've done that, we can zoom back out to look at the full uh, image and go 50%. And as you guys can see there, um, we've selected that. Now, before we duplicate it, let's do the same thing with this background and double click on this lock icon. So once we do that, it, we, we can basically name the layer to whatever we want. So let's name it McLaren. And then uh, once we've named it McLaren, just press enter or click OK. And then as you guys can see there, we've got the image unlocked. And the next thing to do is to make sure that you select it on that uh, on that layer. And then we're going to go control C or command C it matters if you're on Mac or PC. It doesn't really matter. But um, yeah, so just control C and then control V. So once we've done that, as you guys can see, now we have two layers. And if we hide this layer, we can hide layers by clicking on this little eye icon, uh, which uh, indicates layer visibility, as it says there. So we click on that. As you guys can see, we have just an outline of the McLaren itself, and then the background is just transparent. As I guess told you, as I told you guys before, um, this checker sort of thing is indicates that the background is transparent. So let's just bring the background back. And now, as you guys can see, we have this McLaren here. So we can click in uh, uh, using the move tool that I showed you guys earlier. We can click and drag and move it to where wherever we want on this project. Let's say we want this McLaren facing this McLaren. So sort of switching the um, the direction it's going. So we can go control T, which is short for transform the uh, shortcut. And we can go to height and just add a little minus symbol. Or, or no, that, that that makes it upside down. Let's let's do it on the width actually. So let's go minus a hundred percent. It's it's still maintaining the same um, dimensions. However, it's um, negative on the width, making it on the going the other direction. So we can also do that by clicking and dragging like that. But the easiest way to maintain the proportions is to just do it um, like that. So uh, once we choose a spot where we want the McLaren, we can press OK, or we can even do the rotation like I showed you guys earlier. And that looks pretty cool. Just two little McLarens um, facing each other off. So um, what are we going to do now? We can do some effects, let's say um, like a drop shadow. And uh, that looks all right. Um, let's make it a little bigger. We can do outer glow. That looks cool. And then we can increase the size. As you guys can see, that looks pretty cool. So, um, yeah, I just showed you guys everything else. It, you know, it's quite straightforward um, for the effect. But now what we're actually going to do is to actually make a uh, adjustment layer. And um, basically, we're going to mess around with the color correction, the exposure, um, everything to make this image look as nice as possible. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to go to layer and then new um, or sorry, no. We're going to go to layer new adjustment layer. And then the first thing we're going to do is to add a brightness slash contrast layer. So we're just going to click OK. You can name that whatever you want. You can even color code it just like I showed you guys earlier to uh, for, you know, for better organization. But we're, we're just going to leave that alone for now. So um, as you guys can see, this is the first adjustment layer. Now, adjustment layers basically are just like editing layers. They're not visible. They're not necessarily like solid items, but or objects in the scene or in the and uh, you know in the project in the uh, in all the elements. But they're basically just to adjust the um, the visual aspect of this project. So we're gonna go to contrast. We're actually gonna increase the contrast. As you guys can see, if we decrease the contrast, it, it looks a lot more like washed up. Or um, if we increase it, it looks a lot more like like vivid. So we're gonna make it, uh, let's say 40 looks good. 40. Yeah, that, that looks pretty good. And then we can increase the brightness a little, decrease it. Ooh, that looks pretty nice. If we decrease the brightness a bit there. Um, too much brightness doesn't look very good in my opinion. Um, let's go actually minus seven. I thought I'd actually go more brightness, but a little lower brightness looks a lot better. So now that looks that's how it looked before the first uh, adjustment layer. And then after that's how it looks. So, it you know, the, as you guys can see, it already looks pretty cool um, just like that. So we're going to add another adjustment layer by going layer, new adjustment layer. And then we're going to go to levels. Now we're just going to click OK, just like everything else. And then 
um, levels we, we can there's a lot of presets so um, you can mess with that yourself here but we're gonna actually select a preset on the level so we can click darker Ooh, that looks really cool and then there's increased contrast and, and uh, you know so this is basically like a easy way to uh, make your project look a certain way so let's just make let's just select um, let's see let's see uh, increase contrast that's a little too much contrast one darker that's a little too dark midtones brighter midtones darker I think that looks pretty damn cool and now um, since it's quite dark we can actually go back to this and double click on that icon and increase the brightness a bit because it, it is quite dark all right that looks pretty cool now so um, next thing we're gonna add is actually a um, let's see a layer and the new adjustment layer we can add a um, let's see exposure and then once we add exposure um, you can mess around with that we're actually gonna decrease the exposure a bit and then the offset you can mess around with that and then we're actually gonna increase that a bit just to bring out the color the dark colors a bit and then the gamma correction you can mess around with that as well that is starting to look really cool so that is how the project or like it's initially looked and then after all these correct uh, correction layers this is how it's looking right now so let's add one more just for um the sake of you know showing you guys how all this works it's all the same um you know it's all the same concept you just have to tweak it and then play with all these settings everything just to get the perfect uh, look of the project that you want so let's go to layer new adjustment layer and then let's add a let's see color lookup now color lookups are are basically like a correction color layer and and these are quite tricky to work with um because you can you can uh, you can basically load up files um that are called lut files and i might actually do that later in like different tutorials and show you guys how to make those um lut uh, different color um uh, color correction files um so for now we're gonna go with something that is default um ooh, that looks pretty cool so we're gonna go with let's see turquoise sepia but as you guys can see, these are basically like filters um, that make your project look a certain way. Um, let's see. That looks cool. So um, if we're happy with that, we can just leave that. And then, um, yeah, so that's basically like the... Um, you know all the adjustment layers all right so let's say i wanted to add some text now to this project it's actually really straightforward in photoshop there's this icon with a t on it one of the tools and that actually allows us to add text so let's actually select that and then anywhere on the project that we want to act, actually add the text box um or the text itself we can just click um so let's say we, want, we wanted to add a title here at the top so we can just click there and um, type something. So I'm just going to say example since this is a tutorial. So as you can see, we just type te text there, but um, it's not visible because it's like half cut off because, um, you know, it's not positioned co correctly. So if we if we just move like anywhere um, out of the actual text box itself, we can still see the, the move position before we click the um, check mark for the transform tool. So there, you, as you can as you can see, it says example, but it actually is quite big this text so let's make it a bit smaller let's go to um, let's say uh, you, you can change the the uh, the font and everything from here let's say we wanted to change the font so let's let's um, select something else and um, that one that's not a really nice font there we go that's a pretty good font and then um, we also need to tone down the the actual the 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 font size so here we there's like a drop down menu that only goes to 72 point but that's obviously way too small so um we can input our own number here to make the text a lot bigger so let's say um 500 yeah that's good so um that's our example text as you can see there so that looks pretty cool and then we can also mess around with some of the settings um for the actual text itself like effects so we can go to fx and then blending options and then from here we can go to let's say overlay blend mode and then blend mode is basically Basically what it does it's like there's different blend modes that do different things like difference is basically like it it does opposite colors and then you can do um, exclusion which is essentially does the same thing darken 
that that is doesn't really work there but you you guys can basically just mess around with that in different different settings different uh, backgrounds um there's different effects that work better than others so for this one we're actually going to go difference that actually looks really cool and then if we just move around you guys can see it kind of does like an x-ray sort of filter on the background itself on what it's um you know on what it's on so that looks really cool you can still see the clouds and everything on the actual background it's basically just the like polar opposite of what the colors are so um yeah that's it's really simple to add text in photoshop you can also do other effects like drop shadow all everything else that we learned in the effects panel okay so now let's say i wanted to erase a part of the mclaren so we can actually use the eraser tool which is also very straightforward to use so there's this little tool like this little eraser icon that we can select here once we selected that, um, we're going to go up to here and actually select the size. So let's go 100, around 100 pixels. And then um, we're going to actually decrease. If you have a hardness on like 50% by default, just decrease it down to, let's say, we're just going to go to 0% for now, actually. And then I'll show you guys the difference um, when you actually increase the hardness of the eraser. So now we're going to select the, um, uh, the duplicated McLaren layer. And then we're going to start erasing. So as you guys can see, um, you can erase parts of the uh, of this layer using this uh, simple eraser tool. And now let's say we go step backward and then we go to the hardness and we increase it to 100% just to show you guys the complete opposite. So let's select the McLaren layer again. And then we can uh, actually just erase it directly. And as you guys can see, it's a lot different. It's a lot like crisper. And then I can show you guys a side by side by decreasing the hardness and then going back. And as you guys can see here, it's a lot softer, like the way it's uh, it erases and there it's just crisp. It's a crisp line. So that's essentially the difference between, you know, you know. and then you can also select um, different like brushes for the eraser. So that's like sort of like a, a nice little... Um, a pen sort of brush or like a, a a paintbrush sort of not a pen a paintbrush uh, sort of um, style to the eraser so you can do lots of cool styles with that actually but um let's for now let's just go control alt z for a step backward step backward and just go back to where it was so um yeah that's basically the eraser tool and um I wanted to show you guys one more thing before I end this first essentials sort of like basic tutorial is um, it, I'm going to show you guys the pen tool. Now the pen tool is something that is sort of like how um, you make logos, how you make like objects, how you make shapes and stuff um, in, in Photoshop. And this is a very essential um, tool that you must learn. So let's uh, let's make another new project, a blank project. So let's go um, 1920 by t uh, 1080, or um, we can actually just go back to this one, actually forget that. So let's just delete that, and then we have a back the white background here. We don't really have to delete it, we can just click on the visibility icon and just hide it. So um, let's make a shape. So let's say we wanted to make a, um, a, a letter Z. So we can start by um, selecting a point here and then let's say we wanted to make a, a another point here so a letter Z looks something like that right but that that's not necessarily straight so we go control R alt C um, for step backward and then we can we can uh, keep this anchor point here however when we select the second point we can hold shift down which basically makes it straight See, as you guys can see, that's a perfect straight line. Now, to do it diagonally, we can also do the shift tool. You use the shift tool. And then if we want to move this, we can select control and then shift or sorry, not shift, just control. And then and then uh, once you've uh, dragged it to where you want, we can click shift. And as you guys can see there, it's straight. So let's put it right there. That looks good. Um, and then we can also select the third point by clicking shift and right there. So now we're going to actually um, make it like three dimensional. And um, there we go. We can press control to edit that one point. And then let's bring it up to here. Click shift to make it straight. 
and then add another point by clicking shift to make it straight of course and then um, finishing this object once you once you're finished and then you want to like uh, close the object um, you guys can see that little circle icon besides like beside like the pen tool um, and then once you click that, it basically makes it a shape, and then um, you know we can right-click, create a uh, let's let's define a custom shape actually, and let's name it Z. So and then we can click Enter, and so let's uh, actually go to this rectangle icon and then uh, s select Custom Shape Tool, and then from here there's a little drop-down menu. We can select all the custom shapes that we have, and the most recent ones are on the bottom. So your um, icon that you probably just made is on the bottom. And we can click anywhere on the screen and then have this is like the default width and height, I guess. So make sure you're always on preserve proportions if you want it to look exactly how you made it. And then you can you can adjust the height and width, but I, I'm just going to leave it like that for now. So this is the shape that we have. And um, as you guys can see, you can't really see it. It's probably because it's white. So we're going to go to the effects um, and then we're going to go to color overlay. And then, um, yeah, we can change the color to whatever you want. Just, let's, let's just make it black, I guess, because, you know, it's white in the background. It's easy to see. And then we can, we can do everything else like that I taught you guys, like outer glow. Let's make it, uh, I don't know, red. And um, size, spread. Let's actually just make the background um, transparent. So, yeah, as you guys can see there, that's the outer gl glow right there. So... Yeah, that's that's basically all I wanted to show you guys in this um, essentials tutorial. I, I feel as though I covered everything that is the, that is very essential to learn when you first start using Photoshop, from the interface to the you know the essential tools that you must learn. And from there, it's not very hard. Like everything else is really straightforward, just like this. It's basically just more detailed, has more features, you know, there's more features to cover for sure. And that's definitely why I want to continue this series. And um, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, essentials tutorial for Photoshop. And um, yeah, I'll definitely be continuing this and stay tuned. And uh, if you're if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe. And because I will definitely be doing, um, of course, a lot more tutorials, get notified when I do upload. And uh, yeah, if you guys enjoy this, uh, I, I'd love to hear you guys feedback what you guys would like to see in the next tutorial. And um, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. As I said, this has been Mr. Ninja Boy and I will see you guys in the next one.